During a time when our country was recovering from being at war with itself over slavery, there was one city in the country where blacks and whites lived amicably, Wilmington, North Carolina. However, that would be short-lived as white supremacists refused to accept that same reality could be replicated elsewhere. With hate-fueled fury, they would stage the only successful coup in the history of our nation and leave future black generations fighting for what they feel they are owed. On tonight's Prime Focus, our Steve Olson Sami traveled to Wilmington to shine a light on this dark period in our nation. Perhaps a million footsteps have marked these sidewalks in downtown Wilmington since 1898. But only in the last several years have people in this beautiful North Carolina town really gotten to learn about the racist mob that escaped the history books after murdering black Americans on these same streets. People who walk by this church every day are now hearing that this is where black people ran for their lives and prayed for mercy more than 125 years ago. I am the great, great granddaughter of Isom Quick. I was really bitter, I was really angry. I used to cry all the time, like angry, fiery, angry tears, because um, this is generational wealth that was taken away from my family. Inez Campbell Eason, who was born and raised here, says she discovered it all by accident. She was visiting a museum that had hired a black curator who pulled out old records about her great, great grandfather, Mr. Isom Quick. He was a wooden coal dealer. He had a horse and carriage service. And in 1887, he was on the board of directors for the first black owned bank here was the Perpetual Savings and Loan. Never heard of the coup? Mm -mm. Didn't know that your grandfather owned a bank? Right. The more and more I read about and researched, you know, the angrier I became. Mr. Quick was a freed slave who ended up owning not one, but three banks in Wilmington and records show he had at least $2 million in holdings in yesterday's money. At the time, Wilmington was a special place where it wasn't unusual for white and black businessmen to work together. Mr. Quick ran the banks with two white men, and one of them was this man, a son of wealth, Dr. John D. Bellamy. It wasn't a thing, you know, it wasn't a thing. It was basically the black mecca of the South um, prior to uh, Tulsa. Um, and um, the thing was, I think the fear was they were demonstrating that blacks and whites could live harmoniously after slavery. And uh, there was a undercurrent of those who just did not want that to happen. That undercurrent came from a backlash from all across the country to laws like the 14th Amendment that made former slaves American citizens. And what was happening in Wilmington was a bridge too far for white supremacists at the time. Lee Ray Umfleet is a state historian. She says that people who were still fighting the Civil War decided to set their sights on the upcoming election. During the white supremacy campaign leading up to the election, the newspapers used every tool that they had. And there was a speech that was given the year before in 1897 by this woman, Rebecca Latimer Felton of Georgia. And essentially the article said, um, all black men have one thing that they wanna do in life and that's to rape white women. And so we need to do everything we can to protect white womanhood. And if that means lynching a black man a day, then she says lynch. So that speech was run as an article in the Wilmington papers in August of 1898. Over at one of the black newspapers in Wilmington, editor Alex Manley wrote an editorial in response that did not go over well. He essentially said that, that white women choose to be with black men. And that was... That white women were attracted to black men. And that's part of this that's not being said, he was arguing. Yes. Yeah. And that, that was an insult to the white leadership that a white woman would choose to be with a black man. So he becomes a target. And they take parts of the um, article out of context and publish it in the papers as an example of what these black burly beasts want to do mm -hmm. to our white women. And that's why they targeted man. the black newspaper. Mm -hmm. And they wanted it destroyed. Correct. It was this man, Alfred Moore Waddell, who led the men with torches to the black newspaper and burned it to the ground just days after the white supremacists swept the election in November of 1898. 
They stormed City Hall, throwing out the racially diverse city leaders who still had another year in office. And they used this rapid fire gun at the time to execute black people in the streets. By some estimates, as many as 300 died. Those who survived hid for nearly a week in this racially segregated cemetery where the sign to this day explains in black and white how this is a place to bury colored residents. Waddell was a former Confederate officer. He um, led the crowd to burn the printing press building. He led the work to overthrow the government in the afternoon of the 10th, and he became mayor after the coup happened. He said, if we have to choke the current of the Cape Fear River with the carcasses of dead black bodies, then he was for it. We call it the only successful coup in the United States history, because there have been other attempts to overthrow government in other parts of the country. And those attempted coups did not last longer than a day or a week. But this time? This time, it stuck, because the men that were appointed to be members of the Board of Aldermen and Waddell as mayor was reaffirmed at the next election and every other election subsequent. Yeah until the advent of the Civil Rights Movement. 125 years later, and they're just now giving makeshift burials to some of the dead. This headstone, for example, is new, the death more than a century old. Tim Pinnock is part genealogist, part detective. We're going to keep finding people because that's what our mission is now. He's using DNA databases to find the descendants of survivors spread across the country. Did a good job with the terror and the intimidation. Uh, African Americans did not want to talk about that. You know, they were kind of told not to talk about it. And so it kind of went underground. We're all in this together. At a recent ceremony to remember the victims, the city's mayor celebrated descendants, both black and white, who've come together. And we should take this and understand that this is the way that we move forward, not only as a community, but as a country. The acknowledgement is underway. We had a school named after one of the perpetrators called Walter Parsley Elementary. It's now named Masonboro Elementary. I think um, the repair work remains to be done. You would be a banker's kid. A banker's kid, and you, you know, been a banker's kid. and it makes so much sense because my mom was great with money. But the great great granddaughter of Isom Quick says she needs more than words. She took us to two addresses near the waterfront that used to be banks that her family owned. It turns out that the two white men who were in business with her ancestor were both white supremacists, including Dr. John D. Bellamy, who later served in the U.S. Congress and whose former mansion is now a museum downtown. They took full control of the banks when Mr. Quick was forced to run for his life. I look at this building, I think about the, uh, what was lost, you know, as far as legacy lost, you know. You want this building? I do, or, or some portion of it. Do you want a paycheck? I do, at some point. It can come in the form of uh, laws being passed where, you know, we don't have to pay taxes in this city. What do you say to, I'm sure you've heard it before, why should today's taxpayers pay mm -hmm. for yesterday's crimes? Well, because yesterday's crimes helped this country to amass the wealth that it has today. When she walks the sidewalks here, she sees what could have been, not just for her, but for an America that might have learned from black and white people working as equals. So many thinking about what could have been. Our thanks to Steve Osinsami for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.